Did you know, it's illegal to pitch a hammock and rest in it? Anywhere in British Columbia, Canada? Or you will be fined and threatened to be charged. In the same province of BC, the most toxic, addictive, devastating drugs to ever impact humanity are now legal in British Columbia. So it's legal to smoke meth and do needles and fenty in a kid's park, but you can't pitch a hammock? The city and the BC government force the homeless to only tent in designated parks that they approve of. Right beside kids' playgrounds, on purpose. Why? That answer is very complex, and if you were able to identify the bigger picture in all this, and see how it all is related, you would be shocked, and outraged, it's illegal to be homeless in British Columbia, and illegal for a homeless person to tend in certain parks away from kids parks, and you will get a $80 ticket for tenting in a park that's not designated by the city or BC government. How is it illegal for the homeless to live? They get pushed out of everywhere and find their tents torn down by the city, thrown in the trash along with their clothes, documents and all their belongings, with no notice. But drugs are legal? But you can't pitch a hammock at a park as a homeless person? The parks they tell you that you can tent overnight until 9am have sprinklers that turn on at 4am every night and spray every part of the grass or open area including benches just to make sure the homeless can't live. They cause poverty on purpose with the intent to profit and capitalize. They cause addiction and prolong homelessness systematically, which adds to the homeless person's mental health, which adds to their addiction, which adds to their poverty and homelessness. They keep you homeless sick, and on drugs by design, because the BC government is indeed the main drug supplier. So it benefits them, as they bought out Purdue Pharma, right after they sued Purdue for $300 million for causing the oxycotton and Daladin drug pandemic in BC. In reality, the BC government was jealous of the world's biggest pharmaceutical company and their financial success in Canada BC, right after the BC government bought Purdue Pharma and now is the biggest pharmaceutical and fentanyl distributor in Canada, being the first province to legalize drugs lining themselves up to now own the drug trade and profit from it, hence why they legalized it in the first place. Harm reduction is a front. To cover up what's really going on, the homeless are completely and relentlessly targeted and picked apart daily from the system and society. While the government and non-profits or charities find ways to capitalize off of homelessness and create business models around it generating hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars, which never get utilized to actually impact the homeless in any significant way at all. In fact, all across Canada BC there are little to no resources or food, or even places to shower, and hundreds of millions generated per year for poverty relief and the money just disappears. Less than 1% gets used for what it was generated for. The homeless, but people blame the homeless, it's mass genocide, the BC. Government created a drug culture on purpose, legalized it, then became the main distributor to capitalize from the drug trade and profit. All while claiming harm reduction, safe supply, and claiming to be there as a support. It's pure evil and I've experienced it firsthand from a homeless person's perspective when I was homeless and as an employee or someone who got employed to several organizations in Victoria, B.C. claiming to be advocates for the homeless in non-profit and charity organizations, but are in fact con artists, criminals, and fraudulent actors, committing fraud on a mass scale through legal tactics, the law and government even back it, through charity data, as I even worked with United Nations and Royal Roads University around poverty research, and all they did was Invite homeless people to give some ideas of programs that could be created to help improve homelessness. They ask you to write a detailed business plan of how the program would run, how much it will cost, and they promise the homeless person to employ them to host their program idea and request funding for them on their behalf. Then they steal your idea, your business plan and go request funding for it, for themselves, to employ themselves, fund themselves and run the program themselves telling the homeless person, sorry, we couldn't get you any funding, goodbye. This is what almost every non-profit and charity are doing in British Columbia, Canada. I've went town to town, city to city in BC while homeless, and it was the same everywhere, almost like they're all following an exact blueprint or business model. 
it's heartbreaking, and the public has no idea, in fact, they are convinced these organizations and the people behind them are heroes in the community, and they pose as such, using fake lived experience stories, to secure themselves in their role raising funds around homelessness and addiction, without being challenged or questioned, because that could be considered intrusive or unethical having negative consequences or them being disliked for questioning or challenging those with claimed lived experience in homelessness and addiction, without prejudice. Drugs are legal in BC, but illegal to pitch a hammock in between two trees in the province of British Columbia, says by law and the BC government. In fact the BC government has found a way to capitalize off that. To and extort people, by saying it's illegal to pitch a hammock, unless you purchase specifically made straps that are sold by the BC government. Does it all make sense now? Can you see it? It's all about money, and people are being killed and destroyed by design to fuel it all. If you want to see the evidence to back up these claims visit www.victoriabcprofits.c.or or just google, Victoria. BC Prophet.